Some time back we did the unboxing rather the quick view of the Honor 4C and today we are back for the detailed review after a while of using this one. This is GK from techpp.com, let's get started. So this is a 5 inch IPS LCD screen uh, with the 720 into 1280 p pixels and uh, around 294 ppi. This has no screen protection whatsoever. It's rather a very pale screen and the viewing angles are bad. Um, especially when I brought this under the sunlight, it was not so okay. I had to uh, push the brightness to the maximum in order to, you know, kind of even decently view what is going on. And in terms of uh, the design, it's, it's a simple design that uh, resembles the bigger brother, which is the Honor 4X. There is the power button and the volume rocker to the side and on the top there is a 3.5mm audio jack and on the right there is nothing and uh, on the behind we have the speaker grill, we have the 13 megapixel camera with the single LED flash and uh, on the front there is a 5 megapixel camera shooter along with the LED notification and uh, LED for the notifications and uh, proximity sensor as well. Under the hood, we have a 2550mAh battery, but that is non-removable. Of course, there's this color that gives it an appealing look. This has 16GB worth of internal memory with uh, an ability to add uh, up to 32 gigs of external memory. This has got the micro SIM, dual SIM ability, but uh, it works only on the 3G, no 4G. And the OS that this one is running is the Android KitKat. Yes, the Android KitKat 4.4.2 and uh, this has the e EMUI, the Emotion UI skin on top of it. So that's the Android 4.4.4. And uh, this is slightly heavy and slightly bulky. Why? Because this is 8.8 .8 mm in thickness and weighs as much as 170 grams. Now, when phones like uh, Eureka, which come at 5.5 inches and weigh somewhere around 140, 150 uh, grams, this is a 5 inch screen phone and weighs 170. So it's uh, it's just nitpicking. You know, it comes handy in the in, in one's hand, but then it does weigh a, a bit. So it, it could be a deal breaker for some. So coming to the UI that this one runs, um, it's pretty smooth. And um, this is powered by um, Huawei's own Kyren 64-bit uh, octa-core processor clocking at 1.2 gigahertz, and um, you know it's it's pretty good. Uh, I didn't observe any lags or any stutters, and even when I'd opened something like uh, four to five applications, it could still um, give a very good performance, and uh, there were no random boots or any uh, force crashes and things like that. So pretty stable and it's not something that is half-baked and this is a very well-tested um, UI. So let me take you through some of the key aspects of the Emotion UI which is very handy and which makes so much of sense. For example, you're in the lock screen. Uh, every time you go back uh, to the lock screen, there is a new wallpaper that comes up in the lock screen. So this sort of makes up for the very dull screen that it has. And uh, you know the, the choice of pictures that uh, Honor is used is very good here. So when you're on the lock screen, you swipe up, you, know, you get a lot of options here to you know kind of pause your music, share something or just quickly get into settings or use the calculator, the torch and things like that. Yes, this will start reminding you of, of something that you will find on the iOS, in, on, on the iPhones. So, so that's a lock screen. And wherever you are, um, just pull, you know, if you just pull down, you get another screen that again resembles something that you would get in iOS. So you can perform some search and that will search through all of your applications, contacts and messages and different things like that. So that's a quick search option. And that comes in handy because you do not have the app drawer here. So you have to organize everything without the app drawer. So that comes in handy. And of course, you pull down from all the way up, you get the, uh, you know, options to toggle across different uh, options and we have the notifications here that gives a chronological order of different things that you might have done so that's another neat way of representing information and there are other aspects like if i'm to take a screenshot it gives a pause of two to three seconds and 
the reason is it has a couple of options here to share and to edit so if i want to quickly share that on twitter or facebook i can do that or quickly get into editing not a very big thing but then you know it's a very handy option you uh, you don't have to take a screenshot and then again get into the gallery and then uh, dig out for that particular picture then customization in terms of the themes there are just five themes that are available but all of them are really good now we've seen tons and tons of themes when it comes to me ui but then here there are very well picked five themes and you can customize them as well in terms of mixing the wallpaper the lock screen the icons the fonts and different things like that so that gives you a good option there then um, for example if i'm in a gallery and uh, i have to quickly take a picture and i didn't uh, find the one that i need needed here or i took a picture and it didn't come out fine i need not have to close and then get into the camera all i need to do is just swipe down and we'll be there the camera there comes the camera so these are the handy options that uh, emotion ui brings in that are uh, very very good so overall the the, the operating system uh, managed to impress us a lot um, in terms of the battery this will give you Uh, a one day worth of uh, battery backup or say you're starting your day at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning and by the time you end it at 6 or 7 it'll still have 10% of juice available um so other aspects of performance this 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 did manage to score uh, somewhere around the 30k mark so I'll quickly show you the screenshot so there it is so it, uh, it managed to score 30675 which is not a bad score at all considering uh you know it's not a snapdragon processor or something of that sort so that's what it is little below the lg g3 and in terms of the gaming um there's one you know worthy mention that i would love to make is if you start playing heavy games like asphalt and uh, real racing 3 and such it does get heated up a lot and there were occasional uh stutters and lags that were observed but if it's a simple game like uh, um you know uh, sonic dash or uh, at the temple run and so on you should not have a problem and uh, especially the speaker is very nice on this one loud enough so it comes in very handy with the multimedia if you're watching movies and listening to songs and such so the sound is crisp loud when the colors come off bright so that was about the gaming um normal gaming would would not have problem but you know advanced gaming will get you into trouble and of course the heating as well so coming to the camera aspect this packs in a 30 megapixel camera and a 5 megapixel camera let's look at the camera app so this has a very very simple ui you have the uh, button to click pictures and if you want to quickly move into video you can just swipe down and you can swipe up for the beautify mode and this is something very similar to the ui that we find on the show me camera app as well So after a certain point in time, you start looking at the same uh, app, but then that's what it is. People are trying to simplify things. Uh, click on the options button here. You see the normal suspects: the HDR mode, the panorama, uh, the best picture, the the refocus ability, the watermarking, and things like that. And get into settings. You try. You can you know, change the resolution and mute the click sound, audio control, the timer. touch to capture and different things like that so there's a lot of options here as well and you also have the toggle option here to quickly turn on or uh, switch uh, turn off the flash so in terms of the pictures well they come out, they came out really well let, let me show you some samples that uh, came out this handles the focusing really well uh, if you see here i try to focus on this particular flower here this blurred out whereas the focus on this came out really sharp now what i did was turn the focus on on, on the white flower here whereas the pink one got blurred so in terms of the depth of field now it does very well and in terms of color reproduction also it is fairly fairly good 
it doesn't try to oversaturate her daylight performance is simply amazing in low light it does try to make up uh, for the quality by slightly exposing the picture but then it's not a wash out so that again is a good ability here again it's a bright blue flower the yellow one this again in low light so that's good it can shoot decent videos as well so when in terms of the audio capture it's loud enough i did take some uh, video in the night as well so so if you observe the lights it, uh, you know it ended well it was not a complete washout or something of that sort but very decent enough camera So overall, we are very impressed uh, with the camera that uh, the, the Honor 4C has. Even the close-up shots came very nice. This is the indoor lights and such. So overall, very satisfied with the camera. The French shooter also has some uh, good ability to take selfies. So let's try to sum this up. Um, what is good about the phone? The camera, of course, like we saw, it, it can take some very good pictures. The Emotion UI has tons of very good features that will really have you falling in love with it. The battery life, very impressive. It has support for the OTG. It has uh, LED notification light and uh, the signal reception was very good. You know, for, uh, for of all the phones that I've used in this category, this really impressed me a lot. In terms of the things that were bad, no 4G. All the other phones that come at this price range have the 4G, the Redmi Note, the Eureka and things like that. All of them have 4G, this does not have. The capacitive buttons here do not have uh, the backlight and the screen is dull. You'll always be forced to push this to the maximum uh, brightness which might reduce the battery life. And there is no protection for the screen, again considering other phones which come in this range. This is bulky and heavy, again, for the screen size. Of course, the a processor on this one might not uh, prompt people to actually go for this so overall for a price range of 8999 would we recommend this well it, we've got mixed feelings here if you can bump up your uh, budget by a bit you can um, you can get the zenfone 2 or the mi 4i or the eureka also that comes at the same price range and the redmi note 4g which has been a solid performer over a period of time and of course need we say more about mi ui so overall, if you're looking for um, a very cool UI, very stable UI with a very good camera, but willing to live with the lack of 4G and slightly heavier phone, then probably you could go for this, but do consider the other options that I just mentioned. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, until next time, this is GK from techpp.com. Do subscribe for more interesting videos and uh, do hit the like button. Thank you. Bye-bye.